Hello, you're welcome to today's video. I'll be talking about the gas laws. I mentioned in our previous video, that's the video on kinetic theory, that um, the gas laws usually describe the behavior of a group of gases known as the ideal gases. And we said that ideal gases are imaginary gases. They do not exist. They only exist in our heads. We also call them perfect gases. Now, these laws that describe the um, ideal gases are very many and they include the following. We have Boyle's law, according to Robert Boyle. We have Charles law. We have um, a mountain law. We also have what we refer to as gay losers law. We have Dalton's law. Dalton's law is the law of partial pressures. Then we also have what we call uh, Avogadro's law. Then we have Graham's law. That's the law of diffusion. And then we have uh, the general gas equation and the ideal gas equation. So we'll be talking about these different laws in a moment. In this video, I'll talk about Boyle's law. Subsequently, I'll talk about the other laws. So there'll be different videos on the gas laws. I'll just label them appropriately so that you can conveniently use them on this um, channel. So, Boyle's law. Boyle's law was stated by Robert Boyle. That's the same man who defined the atom as being the smallest uh, particle of an element, the smallest form in which an element can exist. Now, Robert Boyle's law, which we call Boyle's law simply, states that as long as temperature does not change, that the pressure exerted by a gas is inversely proportional to its volume. What Boyle was saying is very simple. As long as temperature doesn't change, in other words, as long as the molecules of gas do not have an increased or decreased kinetic energy, then if you increase pressure, volume will increase, or decrease rather, and if you decrease pressure, volume will increase. So there's an inverse relationship between pressure and volume. That's what Boyle's law says. But remember, that is only when temperature is kept constant. Now from this expression, if we were to introduce a constant, we'll have P equals K over V. And if you cross multiply, you have PV equals K. So we say PV equals constant. And what this is telling us is, if you have a gas at a particular pressure, occupying a particular volume, if you change the pressure of that gas, the volume will also change. You change the pressure again, the volume will change. But as the pressure and volume keep changing, their product remains constant. Imagine, for example, that at a particular time, pressure is 20 and volume is 2. Then um, later pressure becomes 10 and volume becomes 4. Later this becomes 5 and that becomes 8. Now interestingly, what is happening to pressure here? It's going down. And what is happening to volume? It's increasing. Inverse proportionality. But what happens to their product? PV. 20 times 2, 40. 10 times 4, 40. 5 times 8, 40. So Boyle was saying, as pressure goes down, volume will be going up, but their product will remain constant. That's Boyle's law. If we were to express this law in the form of a graph, as graphical representation of Boyle's law now, the graph would look like this. Pressure on one side, volume on the other side, and it will slant downwards that way. This is what the graph for Boyle's law should look like. You may as well draw this graph like this. Same thing, no difference. 
But bear in mind that it's possible to draw the same graph this way. In that case, one of the two sides must be inverted. So I may write V here, and then down there put 1 over P. Allowed. I may put P up here, and down there 1 over V. I can put 1 over V here, and put P there. Most importantly, one side should be the inverse. Then this graph begins to slope upwards from left to right. Now, having seen the graph for Ball's Law, let's see one or two questions on Ball's Law. After those one or two questions, we may move on to talk about Charles' Law. Assume we're given a question like this. Alright, look at this question. 400 cmq of an ideal gas exerts a pressure of 600 millimeters of mercury. Assuming T temperature is kept constant, what volume of the gas would exert a pressure of 150 millimeters of mercury? Now, to answer this question, I would simply bring down this formula PV equals K. So I'm going to write here PV equals K so that P1 V1 equals P2 V2. P1, what the pressure was, initial pressure. V1, the initial volume. P2, the new volume, final volume. And V2, sorry. P2, the new pressure, final pressure. And V2, the new volume. So in that case, P1 becomes um, 600 times V1, the initial volume, 400, equals P2, what's P2 here? That's 150 millimeters of mercury, times V2, V2. So that, if we make V2 subject, we have it as 600 times 400 over 150. This gives me 1,600 um, cmq. So that's the volume of the gas that will exert a pressure of 150 millimeters of mercury. Now, if I were to do this more quickly, I could ask myself, what happened to the pressure of this gas in this question? Now, looking at the pressure of the gas in this question, you see that at first it was at 600, and suddenly it crashed to 150. That means the pressure dropped. So what do I expect of the volume of 400? It will go up. But apart from this dropping and that going up, usually you can imagine two people that are standing this way back to back. I'm facing this way and there is my opponent facing that way. If my opponent takes one step, I will take one step in the opposite direction. Three steps forward, I will take three steps forward. So in like manner, when pressure goes from 600 down to 150, that would mean that it has reduced or decreased four times. Yeah, because 600 divided by four gives this. So in that case, the volume that was initially at 400 will not just go up, but will go up four times. So that 400 becomes 400 times four, 1,600. So even without a calculator, without pen and paper, I can look at this question and solve it. I can simply ask myself, what does Ball's law say 
it says if pressure goes down, volume should go up. What has happened to pressure here? It has gone down four times. So what should happen to volume? It should go up four times. 400 times 4, 1006. So that's the answer to that question. It's a very simple one. And I tell you, boss law questions are usually this simple. But let's see this next question. Alright, here's a question. Given that 600 cm cube of an ideal gas exerts a pressure of 400 millimeters of mercury, how much of the gas should be added to the container in order to exert a pressure of 200 millimeters of mercury? Now, if you don't um, solve this question carefully, you just may fail it. Yeah, you just may fail it in the sense that from what we have here, from what we have here, we are told that at first there were 600 cm cube of the ideal gas, so V1 equals 600, and that exerted a pressure P1 of 400. So V1 is 600 and P1 is 400. Now it says how much of the gas should be added to the container to get a new volume V2, which will exert a new pressure P2 of 200. So in this case, I'll go, I'll go ahead and write P1 V1 equals P2 V2. Looking for V2, I'll say V2 equals P1 V1 over P2. So that V2 becomes P1, 400, times V1, 600, over P2, 200. This gives us 1,200 cm cube. But is that our answer? No. It says what volume, how much of the gas should be added to the 600 that was already there. So it means that the volume of gas to be added would actually be 1002 minus 600 and that gives us 600 cm cube. So we must open our eyes to questions of this sort so that we don't get um, carried away. In our next video, we'll be looking at the next law, which is Charles' law. I'll discuss Charles' law and subsequently look at the other.